My name is Maciej Perkowski. I work at Nordic Semiconductor. I am a software test developer. Uh, you can find me at GitHub and my handle there is Permac. You might also see me on Discord answering some of the questions on the testing or Twister channel mostly as Maciek. And today I would like to talk to you about uh, PyTest test in Twister. The overview, we're going to start with simply answering why we even bother about talking about PyTest since we have Twister. What do they have in common? Why do we need it? Also a bit what is PyTest, how it is integrated with a Twister, and then I think what will be the most interesting will be the examples of how we are already using it, and maybe a bit uh, shadow of a light what we're going to do in the future, what we can do in the future with it. So obviously, why we even bother with it? And the, the bold statement is we want to improve the quality of Zephyr. This is like always nice with testing. You always hear test supposed to improve the quality of your software. But the, it's not all about the quantity, it's really about the quality. So we really want to test some new stuff that were not possible before with Twister. Because on its own, Twister supports quite uh, restricted or limited workflow. Twister builds your application, it flashes to your device or starts the emulation for you, and then it only reads for the output from your serial or your uh, fun in, fun out. So it doesn't allow to really interact with your test or do anything beyond this workflow. So, but of course, uh, we would like to do something more. What if we want to be more Pythonic? What if we want to use some cool Python libraries that are there? Uh, Z tests and basically like tests in Twister that were existing, they were really focused on the C side of your application. But what if you want to be more Pythonic? What if you use those libraries there? Also, what if you want to communicate with our device during the test? It was not possible before. It seems quite obvious that, I don't know, if you're having like a shell application, you'd like to test to give some input to it and then read what will be the output. It was not possible before. Also, especially if you like to do some more setup, you want to do something on your host site. Maybe you'd like to start virtual server on your host that will be talking to your client app. Now it will be possible and I hope I will show you in the further examples. Some extra tooling that you might use from the CLI like MCU Manager to program your board to interact with the programming or using CAN interface for communication or even further going on if we would like to use more than a single device talking with each other. So, is it possible? So this is why we start thinking about adding PyTest to the picture, because it's quite popular framework. Uh, it's very often used in the Python community, and according to their documentation, it is a mature, fully featured Python testing tool that helps you to write better programs. Also, PyTest frameworks makes it easy to write small, readable tests and can scale to support complex functional testing for application and libraries. So it's all quite bold statement. And it's basically that's what we are all looking for. Is it true? I hope that after the presentation, you will be convinced that, yeah, this, is, this can be true. So for the main features for PyTest, at least in my eyes, they are like two of them. Uh, plugins is really a cool feature because uh, those are modules, they can implement hooks and your plugins can hook into the module, uh, into a certain place in your application, so in your uh, framework. So like you can uh, imagine you have like a place where you're collecting your test and then you have a hook there, your plugin can go in and do something like maybe change the ordering of the execution or maybe decide how to parallel the stuff or maybe apply some filtration. Also, you can apply the hook on the other end. When the tests are done, you have your reports, but maybe you want to have the report in the other style. So hooks allows you to really easy inject some pieces of your, uh, or other modules to do some stuff with, 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 your, uh, with your data, with your tests or the framework itself. And in fact, that uh, what I'm going to be presenting is actually a plugin to the PyTest. So the integration with Twister on the PyTest side is done as a plugin. So you add a plugin to PyTest and it allows to recognize what Twister wants from it. But in general, plugins in our uh, view won't be that interesting because they are mostly focused on expanding your framework. Whereas, as you'll see in a second, uh, PyTest here is just an executor. Twister is a full framework. For us, the most interesting part will be fixtures. They initialize test function they are really test oriented. So um, they provide you building blocks that you can reuse in multiple tests. 
They have very explicit namings. They are really easy to pull in into your tasks. You don't have to think where they are located. You just really use the name in your task that you're going to use this fixture, and PyTest will do everything for you. Also, they are very modular. One fixture can consist of many other. They can build full stacks of them on top of each other. And they scale really well, both in complexity and also in the scope. And also what is very interesting with them, they provide a safely managed setup and teardown for your test. On this slide, I wanted to present how, what is the general idea behind how the PyTest was integrated with the Twister itself. Uh, this block presents like the generic uh, workflow of Twister, where it first collects the test based on the YAML files, and on the left you see an example of such YAML file. And then it generates the test configurations, apply filters, spawn workers, and then start the cycle where the application is built, executed, and verified. So when we are up to the execution, the main question is being asked, if it, is it a PyTest test or not? If it is PyTest test, then Twister will prepare and call a very certain comment for the Twister, for the PyTest as an executor. PyTest will do some stuff on its end, like flash the device, interact with it, collect the results, and then as the output, it will prepare the JUnit XML report, and Twister will read this exact report and parse the result out of it. So the communication as an input is a very specific comment for PyTest, what to do, and then on the end, we are looking at the JUnit XML report. So the integration is at this kind of level. PyTest runs here, it's put like in a different color because this runs as a sub-process. And the idea, the, the idea behind it, like the requirement was that it should supposed to be like very seamless experience for the user. On this slide, I'm just showing you the typical Twister command that you're gonna call, pointing to a location where our test is, sit is sitting telling that we're going to run it on native POSIX. And then basically, it, it looks like any other test from the Twister user perspective. I, what is highlighted here is just that you see that there was a test passed in less than two seconds on native POSIX. And, and that's it. So it looks like any other Twister output. So you don't know that was even PyTest in the background. But however, this is the place where actually you start seeing where all the seams are, because it's supposed to be really seamless for the Twister uh, user, but it's not that obvious from if you're coming from the PyTest community or more like uh, how it's, it's developed. Uh, th here you can see all the seams uh, because what we are doing, we are calling in a very specific way. If you want to replay the PyTest test, can you do it on itself without Twister? Yes, you can. Maybe it can be a bit more complicated, but not that much. First of all, the easiest way would be to call Twister with extra verbosity to give you this exact comment uh, which it is using to call PyTest. So for instance, you would like to just tweak with your test, run it multiple times, you don't want to wait 15 seconds for all the collection and all doing on, but maybe like just two, two, two seconds to get the test results. So uh, you can call PyTest on its own by copy pasting this command. And in this command, there are several interesting uh, parts. The first, this command actually is like combination of two commas, and uh, you don't see my mouse, but on a second line, will it work? Sorry. I oh, see. Here, in fact, there, these, are, these are two comments. First one is exporting the location of the plugin to the Python path, so the Python, uh, so the PyTest can pick it up. And the area behind this was the requirement was that it's supposed to be really seamless, and Twister is developed as a part of Zephyr. You would get it by checking out the tree. You install nothing. And this was also the requirement for the plugin. You don't want to install it. You don't want to handle which version to use. It's supposed, it, it should come as a part of a Twister itself, as a part of the Zephyr tree. You don't want to install it, which is also maybe a counterintuitive to what uh, people dealing with PyTest are used to. But then PyTest is being called. We are telling that we're gonna use Twister Harness. Also, what is important there that we're gonna uh, tell where the build directory, so where our application is located, so where it can pull it in, that we're gonna need this JUnit XML report so that Twister can read afterwards, some logging uh, parameters, and also in the end, we need to pass what type of device, so which adapter will be used, will it be native POSIX or will it be hardware? And of course, obviously, that we're going to need our plugin that we wrote for PyTest to 
uh, understand what Twister wants from it. I mentioned that you need to pass what type of devices, and this leads us to the idea of device adapter we have in the plugin itself. It's nothing new because all of this, you, you, you also have it in, on the Twister side, and they are called like handlers, but we do a bit of refactoring, a bit of more abstraction to, to get a bit better in our ICE organization to, to allow for easier expandability of adding new adapters instead of like copy pasting. So uh, the, at the bottom level, there is device adapter, which is an abstract base class. So it just provides you the, the ideas for the methods you're going to use. And this is not a full class, it's just a, it's a snippet of the code. So you can have a write method, which is responsible to write data to your device. It's going to check if device is connected. If not connected, it's going to give you error. And then it's going to use this kind of internal method called write to device. And the write to device is an abstract method. abstract method. Abstract method means that if you don't implement this particular one in any module or any class that will inherit from that one, you'll get an error. So this is a method to uh, make sure that your interfaces are aligned. Because in your test, you will just going to call dot write, and you don't want to bother if it's like humu underline or is it uh, hardware. Because at, below, you can see that they are the real adapters. So for hardware adapter, write to device will use a serial connection and write data there. For QEM adapter, the fun in, fun out will be used. The next interesting part of, of the usage of PyTest are the fixtures. And fixtures are these core building blocks of your test that you can reuse in many other. And here's like an example of some of the fixtures that are already implemented for you in the solution. So First of all, you need to uh, mark that a given function will be a fixture, and you will use a decorator, pytest.fixture. And you can also provide what will be the scope of the fixture. So how long should it live? Should it be only set up once for the whole session, so each test will use the same fixture? Or maybe it should be each time for every test, tear down, uh, set up and tear down should happen for each single test. It will make maybe more sense on the, when, when we are looking at the real test. And uh, the fixture, it's also preparing you like the setup and teardown. So all these parts up to the yield part is a setup. As a setup, the, uh, we will try to figure out what is this device type being used and then pull the proper adapter using the factory and uh, yield this device object. So this is like a setup. Then yield returns the object to the test. And after test is done, the code, the code is coming back here. And the finally part is going on where we make sure that device is, is closed after the test. And with this example, I wanted to show you that the fixtures can be also modular because as you see this DUT, device under test fixtures, it uses the device object. So it's using the one from the top. And also they can have quite a configurable uh, properties. So if you look here, the scope, it's using the term scope variable, but in fact, this variable is a function. And this allows to decide from a top level, like if you declare in your test YAML that you would like to use a given fixture for the whole session. So for, you don't want to reflash your device every time for every test, but maybe you know what you're doing. You just want to like reset the device between each test, not to waste time on flashing. You can define the other scope like the session. And this will be figured out based on this mechanism. And again, it will uh, first pull off this device object and the difference is that this fixture DUT will launch the object for you and return the object which is supposed to be already prepared for the test. And at the end, it will initialize the close procedure. So finally, we came up to the examples of the tests. So we can have a shell interaction test. And this is not the real test for the shell module. This is like an example how the shell module can be used in your test. Because here, this is like a full file of, of the test. And you can, as you can see, there are only like two methods. We're only probing a, a minor part of the, of the shell module. Uh, also, what is interesting that to get a fixture, you, you just use it in a test definition. The, we, we are importing the shell class, but basically just to give the, the syntax for the typing and to help our IDE to pick up w which are the properties of, of the shell. But you, you didn't even have to import the shell. It's, you just use the name shell, and Pytest will figure out. It will have the list of fixtures that will uh, define for you, and, and you will be able to use it. And the shell fixture is one 
another layer is built on top of the device fixture, and it just adds some extra handling, giving you methods for read and write over UART, over the, sorry, over the shell. And uh, in principle, that you're just go, going one step further, so your device is ready when we get the prompt. You have a prompt, and this is the moment when you can start your test and start interacting. And here, this is very straightforward. We use this shell fixture to execute command help. So this is like going, you, it will use a write to our device. We get the output as lines, and then we're gonna assert that somewhere among the lines we have the available commands, and our test is passing. And the other one is basically doing the same, it's just using the other command. We are executing command kernel version and try to verify that among the output we have Zephyr version string printed. So to see it in action, this is just a Oops, sorry. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to use this kind of interactive outputs here. Uh, how about if I just turn it off and turn again? Okay, doesn't matter. Well, what I wanted to show you on that slide was that, that in the output you will see quite a nice, um, so if you call with uh, extra verbosity, you can actually see what everything, what is going on with your, uh, nope. Okay, let's not waste time on it. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, I guess when I switch to the pointer, it everything uh, crashed. So yeah, basically here I wanted to show you that how this test looks when you look in the output. So if you look at the output, if you run it, you will see that there is like a, when PyTest is kicking in, it will first print you the lines that, okay, this is a setup session. We're gonna wait for your, we're gonna use the hardware device. We are waiting for the, we, we're gonna use a certain uh, device, certain port where we will communicate. And when we get the prompt waiting for us, this is where the test can kick in. And then we will do testing, you will see that uh, we send an input to the command, all the output that came out of the command, that output was successfully verified, and then we can do the teardown procedure. And also what I wanted to show you on this example, that here with this fixture, they don't define the scope, so by default it is a test, it is a function scope. So every single test will have its own setup and its own teardown to like keep the isolation of test principle. So we will see that flashing is happening before every test. Another example is that so what more you can do? So the, other, the first one was quite simple, showing how you can interact with your shell. The other one is a bit more complex, showing you that you can start doing some more stuff, actually start doing stuff with your device. And this is an example for testing MCU boot, so the bootloader, and the test is using MCU manager, so the CLI tool that provides you interaction with your device. And this is an example of test downgrade prevention. And this is only a couple of lines out of the test, it's not the full test. And again, I'm gonna focus, it's gonna use the device adapter, it will use the shell, and also it will use the MCU manager. MCU manager fixture is also defined in the top level for you, and this is just a wrapper over this MCU manager CLI tool to simplify, you don't have to write every time exact comment what you would like to do, but it's just wrapping over the most typical interactions that you would like to do. So in this test, we will use a shell to first check out what is the version of the application we built and if it's matching the one from our configuration, then we will call create sign image, which uh, is using West sign and in behind to, to uh, sign your image with a certain version and this version is lower than the original one. We have to disconnect from our device because uh, MCU manager will use the same serial line so to be able to get the connection to it. MCU manager will do the image upload and reset the device. And again, we'll have to connect to get the output. We are reading the output until we see that the launching primary slot application, so basically the, the whole procedure ended. And also we want to verify that in our output, there are no lines that will match 
starting swap using move algorithm. So we will make sure that the swapping mechanism didn't start it. We actually want to make sure that the line erase due to downgrade, downgrade prevention happened. And at the end, we'll just to be sure, we would like to verify that when we asked through the shell what was the version, this is the one that was at the beginning, that the downgraded one wasn't uh, applied. So it's already shown you that you can do a bit more, not only talk with your shell, but maybe also with external CLI to, to, tool to also do something with your device. And the, in the end, I think it's the most complex example, which is the, I, I think, really interesting because it is a full end-to-end -end test. Uh, it is using the LWM2M, and it's a test for interoperabil interoperability, and it is using the Lash and Demo server. Uh, what is really nice that is based on uh, Open Mobile Alliance specification. I really recommend you to, to go to that link and to see how it is implemented. There is really nice readme file there. Also pointing each certain test from the specification one by one, is it implemented or not? And all of them are implemented. Also they provide you uh, the ways and I describe how to be able to reproduce the test because it requires a bit of extra tooling how to set up your virtual network. Um, you, you will need also like the selection server and other tools, but luckily they provide a handy Docker image that you can, and, and a quick description how to use it so you don't have to install all of this stuff for you. And what I wanted to focus is this test is really full end to end. So we will have our virtual network that is controlled and, and started by PyTest with Twister. Also inside there is sitting this virtual Lashan server there is also the device under test, so our client application. And it can be, in, in this test, it will be QEMU or native POSIX, but in fact, it can also be like real hardware. This is, uh, the, this, the scales or, or can be used on other devices. And the uh, server will talk with the client using multiple protocols, but also our test can be talking with a server with REST API both ways and also communicating with the client both ways using the shell. And to just show you how the test looks, uh, this is using the nomenclature from the specification, and the test is using the shell, so the, the one you already see, it's using the device adapter that you see, but it also introduces the Lashan fixture, and Lashan fixture will start this virtual server, do all the setting for you, and also uh, it will use an endpoint fixture which will create the endpoint for you. And this is an example of the registration update, update test. And in it, we will use a shell. We're gonna push a command LWM to read 101 to our client. So basically we are asking about this address. In this address, the lifetime is supposed to sit according to the documentation. So we're gonna read it as a, our output. And the first line in the output should be this lifetime. Then we're gonna modify the lifetime, just adding some value to it. We're also gonna read what is the current time. And we're gonna use the server, we wanna write to the server, to our endpoint, to the 101 location, the new lifetime value. So we are pushing the updated value to the server, but then we are again reading from a device until we get update done. So server will push the value to the client, and on the client side, we are verifying if the update happened that, or when it happened. And again, we're gonna ask the server to reach to the client and on a certain endpoint to first get the output. And among the output, we want to see where actually was the last update. So we want to verify that the value of time actually matches the time when we send the uh, update. So it's not somewhere from the past, it's not somewhere for the future, it's actually aligned with the moment we send the value. And also we're gonna, we want to verify if this lifetime is the lifetime we updated to. So actually if all the process happened as we wanted. So as you see, it's like we can interact with multiple agents, with the server, with the device, they both talk with each other. Uh, so it's really like full end-to-end -end test, finally possible. And uh, maybe what is interesting to highlight here, that uh, I, I hope this maybe it's, it's clear that this kind of test is quite readable. 
And if you really take like the specification and all the steps which are in your specification, like a cookbook, here's all the like implementation of it, all the steps that the test is doing. So I, I think it can really, of, of course, there's a lot of stuff going on behind. You need all of those fixtures and they do the stuff for you. But I think that it can really allow to give a, a really simple framework to, 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 to script all these kinds of interactions. So what is the future? Of course, we would like to start adding more tests. There are not that many tests using PyTest added. It's, I think it's in, a, if it's in the tree for maybe a year, but there are not many tests yet using this tool. There are also, I believe, uh, many low-hanging fruits uh, that are, in particular, that use a shell for different uh, stuff. And uh, you can find many of them marked using harness keyboard in the YAML because this was the way before to just tell Twister that actually we don't know how to execute the test because you will need some interaction. So right now you can just, co in many cases, you can just copy paste the, the shell example, which I showed you before, just replace the values you want to put in your input, the values you'd like to verify, and you might be ready to go. Also, we'd like to test more protocols. I, I have a quick chat with Briggs. He's apparently already working for uh, using PyTest for testing the CAN bus. But of course, there's more and more. But not everything is possible yet. Like uh, the topic which is not properly addressed is handling multiple images. And especially if, of course, we have SysBuild that allows to build multiple images, but we want to go a bit further. Like we want to reuse the images between different uh, tests. For, for example, if you have uh, your Bluetooth tests, when you have your central and peripheral, you don't want to rebuild central every single time. You want to build it like once and maybe using different variation with many different peripherals in different tests. So this still will need to a bit more thinking how to add this layer to Twister. Twister doesn't support it yet. And further, having multiple devices. What I show you, all of them are using just a single device under test, but maybe at one point you would like to have multiple devices talking with each other. It's what I show, it's possible to talk with a host. It's, it's, it's relatively easy, but if you have two devices, it, it's not that uh, straightforward yet. So to summarize, I believe that the integration PyTest with Twister opened really new levels of testing that was not possible before. I hope it can have a pretty low entry level. There are tons of tutorials on the PyTest itself. We also try to make the plugin very uh, simplific for the end user. It also allows to like already pull uh, many existing fixtures ready for you to use. You don't have to figure out how to configure your device, how to set up your serial, or should you use a fun in, fun out, or should you use a um, serial connection. It's, it's all there for you. So this is dude type agnostics thanks to this device abstraction layer. Also, it's easily expandable if you would like to add new type of device then you can just either copy paste the existing device and modify the methods which is using or use, uh, use this abstraction to get it there. And the same for fixtures. You can have fixtures in tree, you can have fixtures in your user module, or even if you're uh, just downstream application. And the fixture itself, they are really scalable, so they can do really small stuff, like provide just a string into your test, but also quite um, complex things like setting the whole server and the whole network. They are highly configurable. They are also modular because as you see, they are all sitting on top of each other. And they are also very re reusable because every single test I showed to you where it's using like a shell fixture, shell fixture is using duty fixture and so on. So this is also an easy way to give you a building blocks to play with in your test. And they also are quite uh, nice if you want to do a setup and tear down. Unluckily, you ha didn't see the output, but it nicely points to you that this fixture was used, this fixture was used on top of each other, all the stuff that they're doing. Now you're within a test, and now the test ended, and this is like a tear down procedure. So it's like winding and unwinding in a certain order. And just at the end, some helpful links. And that will be it. Thank you for your time, and I hope you have some questions for me.
Hi. Hello. Have you ever used or do, do you envision using this test framework for reliability testing? Let's say you have a new hardware version or a new firmware version, you wanna stress test it, like test all the interfaces at the same time, reboot it like a thousand times, like power cycle, see if it's gonna survive, like longevity testing, reliability testing. Is that a good framework for that or is that different use case? No, I believe it can be a, a good framework for it, certainly. I mean, I haven't done it. There are no tests like this, but yes, certainly. You, you just, because it's really up to what you can easily script in, in uh, Python. Like here with this fixture, like if you look at the, maybe the shell exam or downgrade prevention, with this feature, you already get with the device, which is pre-flashed for you. But maybe you want to go to the lower layer, uh, which you can do actually like doing disconnect and connect. Maybe you just can do a loop. I don't know, connect, disconnect to your device multiple time until you get an error. Or uh, here in this shell test, maybe if you want to stress your shell, you can just make a loop over the shell execute command. And I don't know, looping 10,000 time or looping for an hour, putting the information then and out and seeing if it's going to fail or not. So certainly you can quite easily, also thanks to the Python, uh, you can quite easily script all different types of testing. Thank you. Uh, have you experimented with using this uh, with like a native SIM test um, within the PC? And um, if so, when you were sending, uh, receiving serial console traffic, could that also be tied into the, um, um, the dummy shell backend? Most likely, yes. I haven't played with it, but uh, surely, because like here, if you have this uh, shell fixture, that particular one will use your device, and device is using this device adapter, but you can exchange like this pieces somewhere along the line, and instead of like using the real shell, you can, I, I guess what you're asking, you can do like a, some mock or some stuff for your shell interface that uh, it will be in the loop. So even like if you want to do this adapter, uh, like here, so I guess instead of writing to real, real fun in fire out, maybe you'd like to replace it with some uh, dummy function that will uh, provide the functionality you're looking for. Is it what you're asking? Uh, in the native sim test with the Zephyr shell backend, it's possible to basically inject uh, text into the console, then um, read information back out from it. There's a sort of a, a glue interface for doing that that's provided. Uh, I think being able to hook that into this would be pretty valuable because it's much easier to do regex and text-based parsing validation in Python. Yeah, definitely. I, I, um, I, I'm quite sure that it should be done. I, I won't answer you to exactly how it can be done, but afterwards we can discuss and I, I'm pretty sure it can easily be done. As, and yeah, regexes are quite uh, nice in Python. I, my, my colleagues often, they, they, you, you can use the existing methods, but you can also use the, your own one. Like you see in that example, they uh, like just write the method over using the other, like match no line or match lines, right? So to, to give you some user-friendly interface for, for this. Yeah, I'll try to look into it because it uh, could be pretty powerful. Thank you. Yeah, great. So to speak to the earlier question about stress testing, uh, we don't use PyTest, but we use another Python test framework, Behave. Uh, but we do a substantial amount of stress testing on our hardware using uh, fairly similar techniques. Um, and then uh, as far as uh, to the talk, um, I think it's great that uh, more people are trying to make hardware testing uh, and firmware testing more and more approachable and uh, easier, you know, lower the barrier to entry. So thanks. Yeah, thank you for your comment. And also maybe to comment back what, we, what you said that, yeah, people are, often people already have a solutions for this. And like internally, we have a huge amount of like uh, proprietary testing uh, tools. So those kind of tests people are, were doing already proprietary. Like you, they, we have a means to do a Bluetooth connection and, and test it. But what we are really interested in to provide a tool that it's uh, rather lightweighted, that first of all, it's like, uh, 
tuned to work the best with Twister and which is also like open source because I, I believe this is the greatest value of the users actually st can start writing their tests, they can actually start executing their tests on their setups and it's not like, like the company have the way to test the Bluetooth but it's actually like the part of the uh, native framework which is used in the open source. So that, that, that's, that was our uh, main motivation here. Thanks for your comment. For the lightweight MM sample and test you showed, is that um, starting up a local s server? Yes. So, is this test being using like a local Ethernet device? And have you, do you have a solution if you wanted to test with a cellular device that's on the internet? So, first of all, I won't be able to answer all the details. I was, I'm not very familiar with this, but. Uh, I, I think they have quite a nice description of what's going on if you go there first. You can also contact the developer like Seppo Takalo. I'm sure he will be happy to answer. But then uh, going further, I, I basically what I wanted to stress during the presentation that you can kind of exchange these pieces. So right now it's using this uh, virtual network um, and, and the protocols here. But uh, nothing stands there. You can, uh, instead of this, when you configure this virtual server, maybe you would like to use actually the real one uh, that can do the stuff for you. And then instead of using this, yeah, this, this virtual connection, use the, like you ask for cellular. Cellular. Okay, yeah, that the one. So yeah, and also like for, uh, and, and this is running on QEM or native POSIX. But uh, it should be also quite straightforward to, or mean, I mean the same test should run with uh, hardware. If you do the proper setup, the test doesn't have to change at all. Thank you. <clears throat> Actually, following on this, uh, uh, on this line of uh, questions, so the, if, if we wanted to run this on hardware, essentially, then the, the, the DUT would be the same because the device adapter cha um, hides those details, correct? Yes. But the lesion in that case, probably we, we, we will need to tweak it to, uh, so exactly. that you'd have another, okay, another, another vision. And then if you want to go over the internet, of course, they, they, I'm assuming, like you said, that the setup and teardown method where I can, uh, like in here, for example, in, I, I'm assuming you're spinning up the Docker image. and at, at, so, so the Docker image is spin uh, by the user before the test. Ah, okay. And I believe I it just gives you like the, the server running in that you can communicate. Right. Okay, it's open the ports and you can talk with the server. Yeah, but there's nothing preventing you from doing that from Python as well if you... No. From, okay. Right. I mean, yeah, you can just add a script that will start the Docker server and everything for you. Yeah. And do, do you have entry points for like test suites uh, in the sense that, for example, a certain initialization uh, routine, then it will only be executed once for all LWM10 tests? Yes, this is, uh, this is actually, yeah, I, maybe I forgot to talk about it, but yeah, this is uh, the great point. So this is particularly because this is also like an interesting story. Like Seppo was one of our, let's say, first customer, and we use this type of a test as a user story to kind of figure it out what would be interesting for the community and what kind of test they would like to do, to what kind of functionality they would do. And in a, like the early version, we stick with this principle of having the test living in isolation and having the setup and teardown every time. But obviously he started asking like, okay, I don't want to start my server every time. I, right. I just want to start it once. And the same, I don't want to flash my device all the time. I just want to just reset it. And yeah, definitely there is a way to it. Uh, like in your YAM file, I, I don't have it in, your, in the slide, but basically if you have like this, this section where you have this harness configuration, yeah. you can add extra parameters, like you can add PyTest root, but I think it was also shown in the here. Uh, you can have the, here, you can have a dude scope in your YAM, and that it will tell you, in, in dude scope in particular, it will tell you like, do you need to set up your dude only once okay. before the all test session or for each test session. Like, and it's, it's functioned by default, so one test, but it can be the whole session. Okay. So, so, so this is what I meant, that these fixtures can be nicely configurable and they have yeah. a nice scope you can define if it's only for very short amount of time to leave or if, if you're gonna to leave for the whole session. 
Yep, thank you. That answers the question. And then the uh, the final question, just to be uh, to be clear, that if I understood the sequencing, so Twisted Dust uh, uh, Twisted Dust runs as usual, and yes. it's just at the end that uh, that PyTest is executed. And uh, because th what confused me is that is Py uh, is PyTest test no, then you flash. So when is it flashed for PyTest then? PyTest is doing flashing. Oh, PyTest is doing the flashing. Yes. Oh, okay. So so basically, we have to like step out of the twister. Because also we because the uh, what we also realized our during our tests like especially like with this NCU manager this was the another example why we really wanted to have pytest there that we would like to do more stuff we don't want to be flashed once and forget about it and just read, read at the end maybe we want to reflash or okay. uh, do reset to see if you're right. gonna update or not that, that's why we added a bit more functionality to the device okay. side so if you so in the MC Manager one, you had uh, uh, you had I think uh, reset, but maybe not flash uh, in the in the in the code. Reset device. So it's reset. Yeah. The, so in this example, the device will come firstly flash already right. because this is like the default what the dude setup is doing for you. But then uh, we are using MCU Manager mm -hmm. to send the update to to the image. Okay. But uh, yeah, certainly you, you can do a bit more uh, with it. Thank you. I think we have time for one last question here. I'll be quick. Is there a convenient out of tree way to extend the device uh, adapter factory, or is that uh, what's the expectation there? If you have a you know custom simulation platform, you want to create. Yes, a class for this that? is, uh, and we will be really glad. Uh, how we will we'll be really happy to support you if you want to add something. We hope we made it in a way that it should be really easy to extend. Like we try to do the abstraction, so at the base level you have this device abstraction, but then on top of it you have like the binary adapter, and on top of it you have like native sim or QEMU, because depending what stuff are common, so what is common is on the lower level, and only the stuff which has to be replaced are on the top level. So I believe if you want to use your own, I don't know, like instead of calling a certain executable, you would like to call different executable, or instead of using uh, FIFO file for communication, you would like to, I don't know, use, use something else. And I, I think as long as you follow this uh, abstract method that are required to, to have, then it will work. Of course, you can, maybe you, you will need to like stop the method and uh, because flashing doesn't make much sense in the terms of QEMU, yeah. but maybe it's replaced with starting the emulator. But yeah, okay. from the top level, they should look uh, Ally, yeah. I, sorry, my question is more about uh, injecting that that new um, uh, injecting the constructor into the factory, so that you know the fixture is generating the instantiation of your unique device adapter uh, subclass. Yes, right. Okay. Yes, I believe it should be easy. Okay, okay. we could chat after. Yes. Great. Thank you. That concludes this session. Thank you.